I did not plan on this video series about metal nibs to go longer than four episodes. Yet, here we are at episode five. I'm making this fifth video because I recently discovered that metal nibs can potentially cause permanent damage to the pressure sensitivity of your pen. In addition, I now have some information about how some kinds of metal nibs might affect accuracy. The most important thing is pressure sensitivity, so I'll start there. Wacom Professional Pens are known to have a very wide pressure range, and that range is known to have a very low minimum pressure. That minimum pressure is called the Initial Activation Force, or IAF. In episode 4, I discussed how the Initial Activation Force was affected by a metal nib and a plastic nib. To collect my data on pressure sensitivity, I worked with two separate pens. Both pens are the same model, a Wacom Pro Pen 2. The first pen, I will call that the baseline pen, this pen has never been used with a metal nib. It has always been used with a plastic nib. The second pen, I call that the test pen. This is the pen that I have been talking about and showing you for the past six months. And during that time, I have been using it exclusively with a metal nib. And just to be very clear, the metal nib that I used is made of stainless steel. Getting back to pressure, in episode four, I used a very crude method of examining the initial activation force. For each pen, I hung that pen from a string and dragged the pen over the surface of the tablet in a roughly rectangular motion. If a pen has a low initial activation force, then dragging the pen like this will actually be enough force to cause a continuous stroke to be drawn. On the other hand, if a pen has a higher initial activation force, then the stroke may not be continuous, or the stroke may not even appear at all. Here are the results of that testing from episode four. The baseline pen with the plastic nib has the standard low initial activation force that we have come to expect from a Wacom professional pen. You can see that the stroke was not completely continuous, but that was not the fault of the pen. That was my fault. My hand was very unsteady as I dragged the pen, and that's what caused those gaps in the stroke. With the test pen, it was very different. I could not reliably draw a continuous stroke this way. Instead, what I saw was a series of dots and dashes. So clearly, the test pen, after six months with a metal nib, has a higher initial activation force. I want to clarify how this test was done. In episode four, I left out one detail. I did not discuss how the pressure curve was configured in the tablet driver. I used the most recent version of the Wacom driver that I had available, which is 6.4.1-3. With this version of the driver, if you look at the pressure curve settings, you may notice that the pressure curve graph has a black triangle that points up. This is identified as the click threshold. By default, the click threshold is not at the very corner of the pressure curve graph. By default, it is shifted just a little bit to the right. This means the driver is ignoring just a little bit of the lowest part of the pressure that the pen is reporting. I am sure this default setting was done for very good reasons. Probably it helps avoid the pen feeling like it is too sensitive. So that is how the pressure curve is configured by default and I did not change that configuration in my testing. This configuration of pressure did not affect the fundamental outcome of my tests. However, I wanted you to be aware of it just in case you try to do similar testing with your tablets and pens. Now I will summarize the initial activation force results from episode four. However, instead of pictures, I will show it as a table. I have two pens and two nibs. That makes four combinations. In episode four, I tested two of the combinations, a baseline pen with a plastic nib and a test pen with a metal nib. Keep in mind that at the point I did that testing, the test pen had been used with a metal nib for six months. And so it is after that six months that we see an increased initial activation force. Six months earlier, when I first started using the metal nib on day one, it showed a very low initial activation force. Now let's try the other two combinations. I did that just by swapping the nibs between the two pens. And then I repeated the test with both pens. The outcome is that the baseline pen, now with the metal nib, continues to have a low initial activation force. This is what I expected. 
and the test pen, which had been used with a metal nib for six months and is now being used with a plastic nib, continues to show an increased initial activation force. Let's walk through a series of steps describing how the initial activation force changed over time for both pens. On the left, I will tell the story of what happened to the baseline pen. On the right, I will tell the story of what happened with the test pen. The color of the boxes indicates what nib is being used. Green means plastic and purple means metal. And again, the specific metal involved in these tests was a stainless steel nib. At first, both pens are using a plastic nib and both show the expected low initial activation force. Second, the moment I inserted the metal nib, the low initial activation force was maintained. Third, after six months of using a metal nib with the test pen, I saw an increased initial activation force. Fourth, with the test pen, when I swapped it back to using a plastic nib, that did not restore the original low initial activation force. So here are my conclusions. One, at the very beginning of using a metal nib, you may not notice any impact on the initial activation force. Two, as you continue to use a metal nib, it may gradually increase the initial activation force. Three, once the initial activation force has been increased due to the metal nib, that change seems permanent. Switching back to a plastic nib does not restore the original low initial activation force. I talked to another tablet enthusiast who also uses a metal nib, and he mentioned that he encountered the same thing that I experienced with my tests. He believes that the cause of this change is that the metal nib is gradually damaging the pressure sensor inside the pen. We don't know exactly what kind of damage it is doing, but we think something is happening there. Now let's move on to accuracy. In episode four, I talked about accuracy. I said that after six months of using a metal nib, that I did not see any observable changes to accuracy. However, very recently, another tablet enthusiast, Cube, told me that he did find some changes when he tried using a titanium alloy nib with two different Wacom professional pens. He tested with these two pens, a Wacom Pro Pen 2, the same model that I've been testing with, and the Wacom Pro Pen Slim. In both cases, using his titanium alloy metal nib, he found some loss of accuracy. That inaccuracy showed up as some increased wobble in the strokes. And he also found a slightly decreased hover height. Because the hover height won't really affect people who are drawing, I will ignore that for the remainder of this video and focus on the wobble instead. He tested both pens with the plastic nib and the titanium alloy metal nib with Krita. Here are his results with the Wacom Pro Pen 2. There is a little more wobble when he uses his metal nib. And here are his results with the Wacom Pro Pen Slim. Again, we see a little more wobble when he uses the metal nib. The wobble might be hard to see at this magnification, so let's zoom in. Now you can clearly see the wobble with the Wacom Pro Pen 2 using the titanium alloy metal nib. And here you can see with the Wacom Pro Pen Slim, again, the wobble is obvious. Remember, I did not notice any observable difference with my stainless steel nib, but he saw differences with the titanium alloy nib that he used. So at this point, we have enough information to now suspect that the material of the nib can impact the accuracy of the pen. If you are interested in using a metal nib, please take into account what material the nib is made of. So ultimately, do I recommend using a metal nib? In episode four, I said no, and I continued to say no, and now I have even stronger evidence why. It seems clear that your pen's pressure might be permanently damaged by using a metal nib. Will I continue to use a metal nib? Yes, I will continue to use a metal nib, but the reason I'm going to do it is because I want to continue this experiment. I want to do a little more research. I am very curious about what will happen to the initial activation force. Maybe it will not get any worse. Maybe it will. But that is what I want to find out. I will continue using the metal nib with the test pen for another three, maybe even another six months. And periodically, I will report back to you on this YouTube channel with what I find. 
When I am done, I will disassemble that pen, and I will take photos of the pressure sensor with a microscope. If possible, I will try to find a photo of a pressure sensor that has never been in contact with a metal nib and that is known to have a low initial activation force. Let's see if we can compare the photos and spot any differences. So that is my update on the metal nib experiment. And as I leave you with a strong caution about using metal nibs, I want to say again, thank you for your time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.